So our, we have a brand new teletype that showed up and it comes with a huge power supply. Take a look at the interesting tube at the back there. That looks like some weird light bulb. It does. So let's just explain the magic eye to me. Magic eye is a device that they, they found in the, the remote hills of Romania. And they mine them. <laughs> and when the circuit is tuned in, the eye opens and stares at you with the So the, the magic eye is the, the, the green thing. But what does your the whole uh, unit do that's been mined from Romania? It's Wheatstone Bridge, so you can figure out what capacitance it is by maximizing the null, having the eye so open. So it's, it's a capacitance meter and resistance meter and resistance meter that, that can bias the capacitance at a fairly high voltage and then voltage. it has a leakage test right and so the leakage test will apply uh, precisely a calculated voltage you know this was <laughs> which which 47 <laughs> when it says 25 right and so. <laughs> <laughs> right and and we want to use it because we want to test those huge capacitors. You want to check for leakage of these and you step up from low voltage. Right. A, a, a modern meter will think a capacitor is fine at low voltage, but it starts to punch through it at less than... Right, right. So we, we, we were bitten by that one where we, right. te we tested capacitor. It tested good with my modern capacitor checker, but yours revealed the fault. All right. So, so basically, we don't know if the capacitors work, so we're going to hook them up to this. This will destroy them, and then we know they don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Should I try them 250? Yeah, I'm sure it'll be. I'm getting no, that's minus 470. Okay, well, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it on. Well, do you have it connected? Uh, yeah. Okay, so here's 25 volts. Yeah, 25. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we think this is why we have problems. I would just spritz this with the oxid. Mm -hmm. just Spray it. Go for it. Okay, I'm the spritzer. Is it unplugged? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone uh, discharge the device? Uh, they have bleeder resistors on them, so I checked the schematic. 460, yeah, so it it, it, it it didn't do as well. So we, there's, it, yeah, there might be a, a fitting component here. It's just this resistor bridge here across the contact. So if it's being erratic and they're new resistors, it has to be solder joint or the contact. And I bet for contact. Yeah. What was that about bleeder resistors? Somebody claimed there's a bleeder resistor. You just got four tens. It just takes time to bleed. So don't touch with your other hand and you're fine. We think we have found the fault. There's a bad solder joint. We saw a little. See the little sparkies? Little sparkies. It's right over here. Okay. Oh, maybe it was just a printing mistake. Uh, uh, 150. 250. People don't get violent about it and break my 350. <laughs> and 450. All right, we have fixed the fixer. All right, cool. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay. Alright. Okay. Is the cap good? Well, yeah, what it's showing is I'm on the 20 to 1000 range, and you sort of look at what capacitance it thinks it has here and figure it out. Oh, so you can measure the capacitance. See, too. it's a Wheatstone bridge. Oh, okay. So. So it's pretty much wide open, which is close to the 1,000. So what's it supposed to be? 500. Okay. Uh, 500 would be somewhere around here. I don't see any. There's no way of getting it to 500. Yeah, it's more. But the way they're specified, you know, it can be plus 80%. Mm -hmm. they're, yeah. they're kind of broad. So, okay. now, so now we try leakage tests. 22.2 volts. So you see it charged and now it's separating. It's a good cap at 25 volts. Something. So what's the maximum voltage? Two, 200, right? So we can only do the 150 now. So stand back. Oh, there's not enough energy in that circuit. Okay, so it's separated, so there's not excessive leakage. 
So it's good it's, enough? Yeah, it's oh. not it's not as good as it was at 25. Look at 25. Let me get a closer, closer look. So that's 25. Right. And then at 150. Okay, but you consider that good? Yeah. Okay. So there were some other capacitors hidden there and they are supposed to be one microfarad and they are right on the money uh, and they don't appear to leak either so I think we are good to try uh, except uh, you found something with the tubes that is not quite right yeah these tubes are supposed to have mercury vapor inside them um, but when we turn the tube we can see at the bottom of the glass there's like some black debris just sort of rolling around in there it makes noise right it might be oxidized mercury, it might be black gunk, we don't know. Yeah, so th this is a Syratron tube, how do you pronounce that? So it's basically the tube equivalent of an SCR. Right. Um, when the grid turns on, the mercury ionizes and it keeps conducting until the, until the voltage drops and then it shuts off. And, and you have glasses because you trust the tube. <laughs> The mercury proof glasses. All right, okay, so we'll put the tubes back. The capacitors are all good. Um, and we'll turn it on with the fire extinguisher, oh, oh, oh. not very far. Okay. And by the way, I had to make a little, another teletype power plug because this works out of this way. And, and plug. the plate connections are uh, away from other stuff. Well, we're gonna hook them up, okay. okay. And here we have a neon bulb, are we still recording? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a neon bulb that's used as a voltage reference. Well, at least well, if there's anything happening, this one should glow, right? Yeah, yeah. And so we have several versions of the schematics for this thing, the original ones, the actual wiring diagram. And, uh, but probably this one is the easiest to follow. It's simplified, it ignores the auto transformers and everything else. Um, and basically, uh, after a transformer, it's uh, the two thyratron tubes, uh, which set point is controlled by this tube, uh, which measures uh, the reference voltage uh, on the neon tube over here. And this is the adjustment. So it tries to regulate from this reference voltage the output from here by controlling the uh, thyratron. And here are our two uh, 500 microfarad uh, big electrolytic capacitors. Uh, and here were the smaller ones, uh, the two uh, one microfarad that we were testing before. And the bunch of resistors out there is uh, what is sticking out of the top of the power supply. So two thyratron tubes, the regulating tube and the voltage reference neon tube. So in reality it's a little bit more complicated because there is the uh, auto transformer here to adapt to all the voltages and there's this bimetal uh, delay relay uh, that lets the uh, th uh, thyratron, thyratrons heat up uh, before the power supply is uh, turned on. And then the, the giant chokes that look like a ball of yarns. There you go. Resistors, the output filtering capacitors. <laughs> I, I love the chokes. Uh, the auto transformer, the uh, actual transformer, and the one microfarad uh, capacitors. And the thermal relay is out there under that box. And uh, that's the uh, input wiring plate um, with the varying voltages uh, uh, at the input goes from 95 to 250, so really a very wide range. Some uh, good old fuses, the pot for adjusting the output voltage, and this is uh, to adjust for the uh, frequency of the mains. Plug this in. Yeah. Okay. That All right. In. Now this goes flipped on. You ready? I'm, I'm going to take a few step backs. I want to see around Luca. And use the zoom. You ready? 
I am ready. So say when. Go. Okay. I see nothing happening yet. See any filament globes? Yes, on the left tube. On the right tube, not quite. So remember, it's the bimetal relay. Is and we have any voltage? Zero energy? voltage at the end. Well, the contactors haven't. Point zero volt. Can, can you see any movement in the in the relay? No. No. Nope. Come over here and look. Turn it off again. No. It's off. Yeah, they may give it a, a, a couple minutes. Okay, let's uh, let me get a good view on the relay. Yeah, because you not only want to heat it, but you want to make sure the mercury is well, you know. Yeah. And try it again. Okay, ready? Go. Oh, did did we hear the relay come on? No, that was me clicking oh, no. this switch. It has absolutely zero volt on the output. Well, that's so that relay that's good. That's good. But this switch is on. Uh, so there's yes. zero volt here. Maybe Do we know? Volts. Yeah, we know because it's glowing. I saw one tube glowing. Are your thyrotrons glowing? So one. What about the small tube? One did, but uh, I don't they, see it. There it goes. Oh, oh, oh. oh wow, look at that. 65, 71. Look at that color. Wow. 70, yeah, okay, 100 the, uh, volt the and the neon tube glowed. Oh my, this is a light show. It's perfect. It works. Light. It's working. And did the, did the relay okay, go on? Why, they're going, why are they dimming down now? Is it still 120? It's 145. Okay. So it's regulating down. You see if the not particularly is well. It's getting it? warmer. Or anything. Well, this is way better than I I hope it would be. Uh, but I didn't see the relay. Well, it hasn't yet. Right. Come on, come the, on. It, it must have is because it, it without the relay, the tube shouldn't fire. Yeah, it must have when the tubes came on. Maybe. Turn it off again so I can see if the relay goes off. I didn't see anything. What is that relay thing? Oh yeah, it did. Yeah, it just did. Okay. So that's the thermal relay. Okay. Okay. Turn it on. It's on. And it should take a little while for it to heat up again. Oh, so the the thermal relay takes a long while. The, the thermal relay cuts out as soon as the it trips, so it will have to go through the whole cycle again. Yeah. At zero volts, so it takes a long, long while. Maybe we have to adjust the thermal relay a little bit. Well, I think it's supposed to be like a couple minutes so the mercury oh, really? kind of vaporize. So oh, oh, so that's normal. Yeah, it's. Yeah, okay. and I heard the relay yeah. come on. And the tube has this wonderful. Wow, it's kind of glowing. There's one that I think is not working too well. Well, I think Both it was working them. just like it should. I think it was forming the capacitors a little bit more. Yeah, because yeah. It's forming the capacitors and, and the mercury is getting it. That's the hell of a power supply. The color of the cyatrons are just, it's just amazing. So if we put more load, I'd expect to see the tubes on yeah. for yeah. one more time. Yeah. yeah, I don't think my electronic load will take uh, that much. If we find the uh, voltage adjustment pot, we could maybe take it down to 120 and put a regular lamp on it. DC? Yeah, yeah. That's a spectacular supply. Okay, so we have the power supply here. We've hooked it up to a load, so we can put some load across it. We're measuring the voltage here, and then we're gonna look at the quality of the output on the oscilloscope here. Right, and Ken, if he blows my Infinium oscilloscope, he has to buy me a new one. He I promised. I agree to that. And I'm going to record it. That would be okay. Well, it's not bad at all. Look at that. Yeah. Turn it into AC if you want. Yeah, that's pretty clean.
And, and then you can tell now the Cyatrons, they are not turning off anymore because they have to provide nav current for the load, so they are steady. Yeah, 3.79 watts. Okay, so that's going to get, yeah, semi-hot pretty quick. So it looks like, you know, half a volt of, of oh, noise indeed. at worst. Yeah, not bad. Oh, you have a little oh. spike when it turns on and off. What's the vertical scale? Uh, 500 millivolts. Wow, that's a pretty good supply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, like this is spiky. Lot, it's a lot better than the cheap iPhone chargers you get. <laughs> well, look at those little fast spikes, though. Like yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. That's, well, but that's still only 400 millivolts. Yeah, yeah, but that you 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 take a you take a low value, no normal capacitor, yeah. they'll go away. And 130 volts, and yeah, so nice. So you have to adjust the voltage. So where's the that's uh okay. So somebody wants to volunteer. Okay, Carl is going to get electrocuted. Remember the one hand rule. Okay. Okay. So okay. I'm watching. Oh, yeah, going down, going down, going down. 120, 120, 121. We want 120, right? Yes. Go up to a smidge. A little. There 120. Yes. 121. Well done. All right. There is a pot on the side or something? Yeah. 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 Between the fuses. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not bad at all. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by. Yeah. I didn't expect it to work because yeah. I expected the, 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 the whatever would be the Cyatron would be contaminated by now. Well, the quality of the output is much better than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for a design from the 1930s and wow. parts from 1953s, when we see when it was built.